Hey everybody. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's been a really long week. Uh, I have a head cold right now, so my throat is all scratchy and my voice sounds weird and uh, I have a runny nose and I've been drinking like a gallon of water a day the past two days and it doesn't matter. My throat is still sore as fuck. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> And, uh, I just worked six days in a row, um, which in normal circumstances would not be an issue for me. I have, hell, in, in, in 2013, 2014, there was a stretch where I worked two jobs. I worked at least one job for, like, 50, I think it's 53 straight days, um, between, like, Thanksgiving and January, like, 20th or something like that. Like, November, like, November 24th of... 2013 through like January 20 or 20th of 2014 I, I went up working like 53 days straight but working six days straight with a deteriorating back uh needing surgery in 16 days now um it was definitely a, a, a task and <clears throat> it was definitely a task and a um it was just definitely a task it was definitely uh difficult and it was not fun um but my co my coping mechanism for pain is laughter and jokes and spreading good times around my st store or my house or whatever. So all week long, even though I was in a unbearable amount of pain, I was still cracking jokes and making fun of my coworkers. My coworkers making fun of me, and I, we were just having a great time because my coping mechanism with pain is laughter, which when I'm in the setting of a doctor's office and I'm laughing and I say, I'm in a shit ton of pain right now. <laughs> They're like, wait, what the fuck? If you're in a lot of pain, why are you laughing? I always tell them it's my coping mechanism, but half the time the doctors don't take me seriously. I'm like, go home and take an aspirin. You're fine. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I'm joking that I'm joking with like my family and friends that like, I'm going to go to my surgery on September 12th. And then my doctor is going to be like, you know, I don't believe you're actually in pain because I'm going to be, like, so fucking happy and elated that day just to get this fucking thing done. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, there's, there's coping mechanism, coping, I'm not going to go through coping mechanisms in this video, I, but I'm just saying my coping mechanism with pain is, is, uh, is laughter. And, uh, that'll be for a different video. Uh, today's video I wanted to share something, uh, that is probably going to be a tearjerker and, uh, 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 I should probably, <sighs> see, with this, with this channel, I've been putting, like, trigger warning in the titles, and I've been saying trigger warning during the videos, and I don't want people to, like, freak out thinking that it's something, like, horrific that's going to trigger them, but I also don't want people that are watching these videos to, like, feel better about themselves or feel better about not being alone in certain subjects to be triggered into a traumatic, like, downfall or spin. Like, I don't want them to be, like, uh, I don't want bad memories brought back up within themselves and then for them to feel like absolute shit or garbage and then just fall into a pit of despair and depression and suicidal thoughts. Um, it, it and I know that's not going to happen just because of my video. That's going to be, hap that's going to be, you know, if that happens, it'll happen because of a number of different factors. But I still don't want my videos to have any impact on that. However, this video is promoting mental health awareness and it is sharing stories about what I've had to deal with that affects my mental health. So, uh, and it's also promoting, you know, domestic violence and abuse awareness at the same time so it's not it's not that I'm like being uh, inconsiderate to your to your pain or to your trauma or to your past but also I would rather people watch these videos all the way through just so they hear how I how I dealt with it just because not because I'm self-centered or conceited or anything, but just, oh, by the way, I'm completely sunburned. I'm not, like, freaking out or anything, but I, I didn't wear sunscreen the other day to an outdoor concert, so my re my face is, like, a lobster right now, and it's around my arms, it's around my knees, um, just in case anybody was wondering. Um, 
but I'd rather the people that watch these videos watch them all the way through so that way you can see what I do to cope with these things to see if you relate to them or even see if you don't know how to cope with a certain issue to see how I deal with it and maybe you would want to try that just to see if that helps for you. Um, because, I mean, my number one thing that I would always recommend is, is a therapist. Um, I don't see one right now because my track record in the past was like awful, good, awful. And my three therapists I've ever seen before in my life. Um, and then a psychiatrist that just treated me like a fucking pill machine. Like, here, take this, take this, take this, take this, take this. And would never actually talk to me. And I hated it. Because um, I didn't feel like he actually cared. I just felt like he was just a money machine. Like, hey, pay me, you know... $500 a visit just for me to keep feeding you pills that may or may not help. Um, I mean, I know it's trial and error with uh, medication, but I mean, he was he was really heavy on the on the medication spectrum and not at all on the, hey, let's talk about your issues part. So I was really pissed off about that. Um, I'm not trying to scare people away from therapy because that's, that's a good resource. Um, it's really good to be able to get all your feelings out there to a neutral person that doesn't know... Um, that's not biased, you know, they, they're just hearing your side and then they can just help you through whatever it is you're feeling. Um, and it's, and just help you get a sense of calm within yourself amongst all of your crazy thoughts or amongst all your, your thoughts that just make your head want to explode, uh, or feel like it's going to explode. Um, and I'm completely veering off the track. So let me get back on topic. I, this, this channel is going to go on forever because I have so many things I want to talk about. Um, I keep putting little like bits and pieces into other videos and I'm going to talk about it in future videos so please keep watching these videos because I swear it's gonna get better and I swear I won't be sick at every single one and I won't be completely miserable <laughs> I feel like crap right now I I my head does not feel great right now my throat is scratchy and, and itchy and it's just sore as hell and everyone knows that I am tired even though I just slept for like nine hours I'm I just anyways um, so this video, um, it, it's going to have some traumatic, uh, a traumatic story involved, but it's something that, um, anybody could have gone through before, uh, not just people of the LGBTQ community, um, and, and I think, I think the, 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 well, not the stigma, well, yeah, I, I think I think the, the general idea behind or the general um, consensus behind who this happens to is just females. It is not just females; it is males too, um, and you see it in the media now. Um, and even even not in the media, it can happen to your friends. It can happen to your family. It can happen to your colleagues. Um, please don't discredit them for the trauma they've experienced. Um, and don't always assume that they're not telling the truth because that can make them feel even worse. Um, some people, unfortunately, do it for attention and aren't telling the truth, but 95% of the time, they'll be telling the truth and really, really, really need your help. Um, and um, basically, my story is that... I, I don't think I've ever told anybody this, even my best friend Matt... Um, Um, but, uh, when I, I, I don't go to Boys Town anymore in, uh, in Chicago. Um, I don't even mention it anymore. I used to, you know, talk about it uh, like, oh, you know, I don't remember how I used to talk about it, to be honest. I, I don't talk about it anymore. Um, I actually used to get my haircuts done by a friend down there and I stopped going to him because of this, uh, incident. Um, because it happened not too far from where his uh, salon is. Um, I, so my abusive ex and I, we were living together at the time and we, I, I befriended a friend of his. I befriended a few friend of, friends of his and we became good friends, but I had to block all of them, at, at, you know, in the past few months because I was just like, I can't, I, I can't be, in contact with anybody from my past, like from, that's connected to him in any way, or that might still be connected to him in any way. I just can't do it. Um, and uh, well, 
plus a few of them are wackadoodles. Anyways, um, but no, I befriended a friend of his that lives in the city, and um, he was a good guy, I thought, and I went to Boys Town with him, um, or I'm sorry, no, I went to his, I went to his apartment, we hung out, um, and then we walked to a bar, and we had, I had one shot and one beer, and this is at a time where I was drinking over a pint of vodka at that time, so one shot and one beer was like nothing. Um, but then we went back to his apartment and, uh, I, I, he gave me some kind of drink in his apartment and I took one sip out of the, the drink and pretty much almost immediately after taking that sip, I, I got really dizzy and I felt really... Uh, really confused and really out of it and uh, I said dude what what is this and he said it's just uh, Malibu rum and I said it's not just Malibu rum what, what the hell is this and I looked at him and the whole room was spinning he there was like three of him and I was like dude what what is happening right now and I was like I had one shot one beer and one sip of rum there's no way that that makes me like out cold Plus, we walked to the bar, and I got back, and no problem, like, no problem. Like, I was walking in a straight line. I was still completely coherent, and, you know, I was talking fine and everything, and we got back to the apartment. I took one step in the middle of the room, and I was like, what the fuck is this? And I, and he, uh, he said, it's just middle of the room. Don't worry about it. And I was like, it's not just, and the whole room was spinning, and I was like, I, I need to, I need to leave, and, and I fell over onto the floor, and that's the last thing I remember until the morning, and I woke up in the morning, and there was a used condom on the floor, and my, uh, my backside was bleeding profusely, and I was so ashamed and embarrassed, and I was not clothed, and I I got dressed really quickly. He was sleeping right next to me, and I I don't I, I was drugged. I was drugged, and I was raped, and and I felt so ashamed and so embarrassed. Um, Because, um, um, <clears throat> I was, uh, I was just really ashamed and really embarrassed and really confused and really mad and, and sad and I, I didn't, I didn't know what to do, so I, I got dressed really quickly and, um, I ran down. I didn't even wait for the elevator. I just ran down six flights of stairs and ran. Uh, I didn't know where my car was, so I just started running down the streets and tried to. I had a fob for my car and I kept hitting the alarm button just trying to set off the alarm to my car. Um, which in the city, I mean, there's car alarms going off everywhere, but um, I just. I literally just kept running up and down the street and people kept like looking at me because I was I, I was running around just frantically like just panting and just looking scared and confused and just so lost and I was just running around just hitting that button so hard and just running every which way I was running I must have run a mile before I figured out that my car was right around the corner um, and I finally found my car I got into it and I turned the car on and the second I turned the car on, I started shaking so bad because I don't think anything had set in yet. And then I just lost it. I, I started sobbing. Um, you know. And. 
and unfortunately I did not call the police. I I have been raped by four different men and not a single one of them I called the police on. And that is a horrible regret to have because I'm fearing that they're doing that to somebody else today or that they did that to somebody else after me. And I had a chance to stop it. Like the guilt that eats me up every day, it, it, it's, it's too much. It's, it's, I had a chance to put these four fucking monsters away and I didn't do it. Or at least a chance to put these four monsters away and I didn't do it. And it, it, the guilt that eats me up every fucking day. I wake up every morning thinking these four people might still be out there doing this. And I just don't know how to get rid of the guilt. And <sighs> these people that are coming forward with these like sexual assault claims, I'm not saying any of them are fake, I'm just saying the people are coming for these sexual assault claims, some of them are saying like, I'm, I'm sad I didn't come forward sooner, because it's been, for some of them it's been like 50 years. Some of them are in their 70s now and they were abused when they're in their 20s or you know, when they're five or whatever. And they say, you know, I'm so sorry that I didn't say this sooner because I was scared and, and I, I was alone and I didn't know what to do. And I'm scared that they did more damage to more people and, I'm, and I don't know how I'd live with myself if I knew that was true. <clears throat> and um, every day I wake up and I, and unfortunately one of the first thoughts that runs in my head is, you know, I really hope everybody's okay that that has ever come in contact with these four people. Because I don't wish any of this pain on anybody because it's not, it's not easy to live with. Yeah, I'm shaking pretty bad. Um, But, um, not to sound too cheesy, but that is an everyday struggle of mine, is having to live with the regret of not calling the police on any of these people. Honestly, I don't even think it crossed my mind to do it, because I was so confused all four times. Well, the, the one guy obviously did it so many times I lost count, but it, it the, I... I just really hope that nobody else came in contact with these four people. I'm not naming names. Honestly, I only remember the first names of three of them. Um, but I wouldn't out them here because I don't want to put a target on my back. I don't want them to happen to find these videos now or years from now and be like, fuck, I gotta go kill this guy now. Don't want that to happen. Because as much as I want to help people, I mean, the, the thought of going to the police and reporting these four people has crossed my mind a million times. A million times. But I just don't know if it's worth it. Because it's been years since all of them, and I, they could have been doing this damage for, for the years that it's been to other people. And I just don't know if it's going to be good for my mental health. And unfortunately, I'm 
kind of selfish in that way that I don't want to completely destroy my own mental health. Thinking about, shit, once I start this train, it puts a target on my back. For, from, that's three. Four different people. Um, so I, I don't know. But, being, being drugged and raped is not anything to be, I was going to say it's not something to be ashamed of, but I was super ashamed, super embarrassed, super guilty. I, I felt, I felt, I felt like it was my fault, um, because I trusted someone that had connections with an abuser. But it's been six years since then, because that happened in September of 2013. Um, So it's been six years. And I've grown a lot since then. Um, I have great friends. I have great coworkers. I have great family, besides my mom. Um, you know, just filed for bankruptcy, so I'm not broke anymore, <laughs> which is a great feeling. And, you know, getting a spinal cord simulator implanted in two weeks. I'm getting my back, well, my leg fixed. Um, going back to school in January, getting a different job, hopefully by Christmas. Um, things are looking up. It, it's taken a really long time, and I'm not saying it's because of that one thing, but I'm saying that making strides, in, oh, and I'm just, just past 29 months uh, sober. I think I'm 889 days sober right now. Um, you're still going to have victories in life. Be bleh. You're still going to have victories in life. You are still going to be proud of yourself. And that is okay. And that is actually better than okay. That is perfect. You need to be proud of yourself. You need to be proud of the victories you have in life. And I am proud. I'm proud that I'm getting this surgery done. I'm proud that I made the decision to have this surgery done. Because I did not consult my parents for it. I did not consult my friends for it. I did not consult my colleagues for it. I did not consult anybody for it. I said, this is my health. This is my decision. I went through the process of getting the temporary one done. And knowing the risk and knowing what's going to be involved. And I still said, fuck it, let's do it. Because I know that it's going to mean a, a lifetime of being able to actually do the things I love again which I haven't been able to do for four years now. And and I'm proud that I'm able to go back to school in January because I filed for bankruptcy right now. So I actually have money to be able to go back to school in January. And I'm proud that I'm gonna be going into hospitality because I really care about helping people. And I'm not, going into hospitality in the hospital setting, but I'm going to actually be going into hospitality in the hotel setting because I like to talk to customers. So the hotel setting is perfect for me because customers come in and go out every single day, just all day long. And it'd be great to be able to talk to people and tell them, you know, make sure that their stay is, is great and help them manage a hotel one day so I can make sure that my guests are, are comfortable and welcome and feel great and that is my dream and actually my dream really is to run uh, is to own my own, own deli because I really miss that and I honestly think I'd be fantastic at that well I would be fantastic at that because I make some, some good food um actually just made chicken shizzle yesterday which I'm gonna go eat after I'm done making this video um But I have, there's bigger strides in life post-trauma. Getting past the trauma without letting your life unravel is always a plus. Is always something you should be proud of. I kept drinking crazy amounts after I got raped by that guy. But I also got raped by two other guys and my ex. And lived with my ex for another nine months after that incident happened. So... 
there are a bunch of factors that let that dug into me drinking more. But what I'm trying to say is that even if it takes a long time, you're going to do things you're going to be proud of again. Even if it's not right away, you're going to do things you're going to be proud of again. And when you do those things, you're going to feel so good about yourself again. You're going to kind of, not forget, but you're going to be, you're going to feel less shitty about what happened because it still feels shitty to me. Like I said, I still wake up with the guilt every day that there are four people running on the earth, uh, running on this earth that I know that have abused me that might be abusing others right now or have abused others the past six years that I, and that I've not been abused by these four people. <sighs> Uh, six years, four years, whatever. Um, and um, I am really sick. My throat is like really starting to get really scratchy. Um, basically, it took me six years to share this story. Because I have always felt ashamed to talk about it. But I've been so open to talk about my ex. And the reason being that I dated that guy for a year and a half before every, any abuse happened. Well, that's not true. But before any uh, sexual assault happened. And the other three were kind of one and done situations. And I'm not saying that makes it any better. It's, it's still bad. It's still horrific. Um... But it's still more shameful because it's people that you trusted that just one time took advantage of you and then you, I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm, I'm seriously not, I'm not feeling well, so I'm probably just getting the video right now. Um, I'm not making my points very well and I can't think clearly right now, but um, that's, that's, the, that's the story that I wanted to share today because it's, it's something that other people I'm sure have gone through that watch these videos and I'm not trying to discount anybody else's uh, experience, but um, I seriously feel awful right now. Uh, uh, if you want to message me on Instagram and share your story with me personally, like they won't be shared to anybody else. Um, not that I'd love to hear it because that sounds kind of creepy, um, but I'm, I'm, I'll am I'm, be here to hear it. Like I'm, I'm happy to listen. Um, if you need somebody to talk to, please message me. I'm happy to listen. I don't know if I'm the greatest at giving advice, but I'm just, I'm here. So please talk to me if you, if you need somebody. Um, I'm not doing much right now, and I'm going to have two months off of work coming up in two weeks. So please, please, please talk to me. I have plenty of time in my hands. Um, my Instagram will be in the description. Comment on the video if you'd like. Like the video if you'd like. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like. The subscription button will be down here. My last video will be over here, or vice versa. I still fucking can't figure this shit out um but uh yeah it's it, it, life will go on keep fighting keep loving keep la laughing uh just keep going keep living i love your enemies i love your nightmares outlive everything um you'll you'll make it uh it, it might be gut-wrenching it might be shameful it might be awful at times but you will make it and you will be strong and you will you will survive and if you need anybody reach out to friends family neighbors colleagues parishioners if you're a church person or whatever or whatever those people are called i don't know i'm not religious anymore um reach out reach out to other people uh if you need help uh the police in extreme uh, circumstances um there's shelters everywhere there's domestic abuse um like shelters set up everywhere um, they're all over Chicago, they're all over major cities. I'm sure smaller cities have them too. Um, do, you, do your research if, if you need to. If you, and if you can't, message me and I'll do the research for you. I will gladly do that for you because uh, I am a firm believer in helping people get out of shitty situations. That is the reason that I made this channel is to help people survive everyday struggles but also to escape um, harmful situations. And pretty soon I will start uh, posting uh, domestic abuse hotlines at the bottom of the screen or bottom of the screen in the description uh, to help people in the future um, I just have to figure out the right numbers to put down there so everybody have a great week have a great weekend coming up um, I will post next Tuesday as usual thanks for watching uh, I will see everybody next week and hopefully I won't be sick <laughs> I feel awful right now everybody have a great week